So um, I will present you uh, studies we have been doing in the context of the upgrades of, of the CMS experiment using a high granular calorimeter, which is somehow based on, uh, on, the, on the experience of CLIC and, and ILC. Okay, so the context is a bit different because it's, it's the LHC environment, so it's PP collisions with uh, high pileup. So, okay, just to, to, this is just to set up what are the experimental uh, prospects for, for Illuminos LHC. It's just a reminder of the achievement of somehow of the confirmation of standard model in the, in the run one from W, w cross section down to VBFZ uh, production. So it's uh, some six orders of magnitude. But we are eagerly looking to, to, what, is, um, to what is beyond this, this, this standard model. So f the, in terms of machine schedule, so we, we have the, the new run starting at a higher energy uh, until, uh, and this will last until somehow 2022. And after that, the machine will be upgraded and also the, the detectors will be, will be upgraded to, to cope with the, with the new running uh, at, at very high luminosity. So we are talking about 510 to the 34 uh, at 14 TeV. So the detectors have to be upgraded to, to, to be able to profit from, from this high, high luminosity regime to, to acquire up to free afterburn. So in the next slides, I, I'll focus on the preparation for this, and in particular in, uh, on, of the forward calorimeter of CMS from one of the, the perspectives. So what we want to explore at high luminosity LHC is uh, mostly to explore the, the best we can, the, the, the measurement of the couplings of the Higgs, uh, and to, to gain some insight into the self-coupling of the Higgs at the level of 30%, and to test vector boson scattering. Okay? So these are, these are somehow the, the, the benchmark channels that we have to, to, to take in, in, into account when we are optimizing uh, uh, the performance of our detectors. But also ultimate perf per performance, in ultimate precision in B, B physics, top physics, and also search, search for new physics, of course, if, if there is something to be found in the, in the, in the 14 TV energy regime. So the requirements for the end cap calorimeters, now switching directly to, to, to what we are looking at, are to have a good energy resolution for electromagnetic and hadron showers, and we are talking about uh, energy resolution in the forward region, so talking about uh, uh, highly energetic uh, electrons, photons, and jets, uh, to enable a powerful and flexible trigger. And given that uh, the Alminos LHC, I mean, we expect of the order of 140 pileup per event, th these, these detectors have to be uh, proved to be radiation hard. Uh, th this plot here is showing the, somehow the, the distribution for the VBF jets in a Higgs to Tau Tau VBF production. And I'm highlighting here the end cap region I'm talking uh, about. So in uh, talking about pseudo rapids between 1.5 and 3, and you see that half of these jets, either the f most forward or the most central jet, will fall in this region. So uh, the, the, the calorimeter has to, to be able to reconstruct uh, very accurately these, um, th these jets. So I, I will guide you through, through, through the, the studies that we have been made, uh, that, that we have been making with the high Arctic calorimeter. Uh, it's an imaging particle flow calorimeter, similar to the concept of, of, of CALIS. Uh, and uh, so in total, it has 9 million silicon pad sensors, uh, detectors. Uh, and this is one of the options. So in CMS, we are still uh, deciding which option goes forward. Uh, so the, the decision will occur only end of March, so I will report on what we have found so far. So the reasons why, why we are proposing, we are studying this is, uh, given that it's a dense high granular 3D calorimeter, then uh, we have uh, unprecedented topological information. We can do shower tracking and we can potentially use particle flow uh, up to, to its best uh, uh, capabilities. And we, we, we can match very well the energy resolution for, for boosted particles, which are in the end cap uh, region. So um, we want to exploit this to have a, a very good level one trigger and particle flow, and also unfold the, the, the fact that uh, the, the detector is not projective at phase, but given that we have several layers, uh, several longitudinal information, we can somehow reconstruct and track back to the, to the vertex. 
Furthermore, we can, one, one nice possibility is that we, we can apply a pile-up subtraction on a layer-by-layer -layer basis because we have uh, several, several, uh, very uh, uh, dense information. So the, the colorimeter concept is, is summarized here. This is a, a picture of, of the end cap region, one of the sides. Uh, so there is a, an electromagnetic colorimeter which has 30 layers of tungsten and, and lead and silicon. Uh, with uh, increasing uh, increasing uh, radiation length similar to the Kalis model. So there are three subsections with increasing uh, radiation lengths. And the cell size in this region is between 1 cm and 0 0.5 cm squared, depending on the pseudo-rapidity. Then after, after the ECAL, it follows a, a, an adronic color meter, um, which is made of brass and, and silicon, which has 12 layers. Uh, this is a uniform sampling color meter and amounts to a total of 3.5 lambda. And the cell size here, uh, the, the baseline is one centimeter square. And uh, in the, the last part follows a backing uh, tail catcher, uh, adronic color meter, which is brass and scintillator and uh, amount, makes the sum of the total go up to 10, 10 lambdas. So one can compare somehow to get a feeling with the silicon tracker. Uh, I'm not going through the full table, but I want to highlight just uh, two, two aspects. One is the, the, the fact that the radiation that we are prone to is, is mainly coming from neutrons, not so much the, the charged hadrons in the tracker. And we are talking about radiation lev levels which go up to 10 to the 16 one MeV neutron equivalent. And this, this is, uh, is occurring in the highest pseudorepidity region, so uh, near eta of 3. Okay, so th this drives a bit the 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 the, the, um, the 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 design in terms of cell size to be used and silicon width to to be used. So we have three regions uh, which uh, use different silicon width, going from 300 microns to 100 microns, and also the cell size is changing. And this this way we can. Uh, we can have a detector which is not fully occupied, uh, like it's shown on the, this uh, uh, rightmost plot. This is for a pileup of 200. And you see that the highest occupancy uh, you get at the heat of 3 is of the order of 35%. Now, um, given the other, the other uh, um, difference that I want to highlight is, is the dynamic range that is required for such a detector. So when we're talking about tracking, you don't need a, a large dynamical range, but here we are talking about detecting electrons and photons which have very high energy, so they will deposit a lot of energy in the silicon. Okay, so uh, this table is for, for, for uh, an electron with a PT of 150 GeV, and depending, on, of course, on the absolute rapidity, this can go from 500 uh, GeV to uh, 1.5 TeV in electron energy. So the dynamic range that you need in the silicon, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the electronics, is quite high to, to detect a 1.5 TeV electron uh, in, in the ECAL. So, um, the, <coughs> roughly, um, the, the, the maximum energy that is expected in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sensor uh, f from these, these electrons is somehow uh, set, uh, I mean, we, we simulated this and we, we, we determined that by using a varying uh, silicon width, uh, we can uh, have this in the order of, of 10 pico coulomb, uh, uh, which, is, which, which is comfortable for, for the electronics, okay? So for, for the silicon sensors, uh, th this is showing the, 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 the pulse uh, for charge collection. Uh, th this is with a test with laser. And so it, it has to be a very fast pulse because we're talking about 25 nanosecond bunches. So the energy has to be collected very fastly. And th this, this is all normalized by area, but it's showing the effect of after ir irradiating with neutrons up to two levels which are well above the aluminosity LHC. And th there is a, a, an interesting feature here that the, the, the pulse shape actually uh, gets shorter and the rise time also gets shorter again. So the width is within 10 nanoseconds. So th this is good and it's, it's actually relevant for timing. Uh, 
the, the, the other plot below is, is summarizing the charge collection after irradiation. So there are 300, 200, and 120 micron silicon being irradiated, and you see the, the, the depletion, on, uh, or not the depletion, but the, 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 the decrease in the charge collection. So in the, in the most forward region, so at the levels that uh, well above the, the aluminosity LHC, we are talking about uh, 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 a decrease in the signal to noise uh, to, to uh, an order of two uh, after, after the full aluminosity LHC uh, takes place. This, this is still okay. For the front end electronics to, to, to read out uh, the, the, these, uh, these, these, these uh, detectors, we are uh, considering a design which uses a, a time over threshold. So, so it has two regimes. Uh, it, it operates with an ADC up to, to a level of 100 uh, femtocoulomb, and above that, it uses a, a TDC to integrate the remaining energy. So, so to cover the full dynamic range, which, which is quite large. So the, um, this TDC has a, a, a 100 picoseconds bins and goes, as I said, up to 10 picocoulomb. And it has a nice feature, which uh, that is, it has the potential for 50 of the other 50 picosecond timing. So th this distribution here is, is from simulation here uh, for, for 100 femtocoulomb signal. So it's still, still on the onset of time over threshold. The, the RMS of this distribution is 50 picoseconds. So in principle, th this can be used furthermore to, to reject pileup based on timing. Uh, but it has a, a drawback uh, that is that now that you are using a TDC, you have some time to integrate the charge, and this may induce some, some dead time in the detector. And given that bunches are, are coming all every 25 nanoseconds, uh, th there, is, um, there is some concern that uh, uh, the, the detector is busy integrating still what is remaining from the previous bunch. So the, the preliminary uh, estimates show that this is a small fraction of cells, less than 0.1%. Uh, and uh, but we are keeping, we keep investigating this and keeping as backup a low gain design which won't have this this, this TDC. But we we lose we lose uh, uh, in signal to noise. So regarding the calibration of this detector, this is a, a, an essential aspect. Um, because we have too many cells and we want to keep the resolution uh, with, with the performance capability. So one thing that is good about pileup is that it's rich in pions and pions will deposit, they, they behave like MIPS in the detector until they interact. So we can isolate this, this, these pions and look for the MIP peak and establish the calibration from there. So this is just highlighting how to isolate uh, a MIP in the detector by requiring isolation in, in the previous and, and the subsequent uh, layer and look at one layer and we can recover the MIP peak even in a, in the, in a scenario which has uh, uh, 200 pileups and signal to noise over two. So th this can be, uh, th this is feasible in the future. So th the effect, uh, of how precise do we need to be on, on this calibration. So this curve is showing, um, depending on, on how precise we get in the, in the, in the, in the MIP calibration uh, sequence, what is the impact on the constant term for, for electrons. So we want to keep this constant term as low as possible, ideally zero. So uh, the, 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 the bottom line, the, the, the conclusion of this study is that if we keep the intercalibration uh, uh, below 3%, in the calibration uncertainty below 3%, this translates to, to a constant term in electron resolution which is below 0.5%. So this is fine. Okay, perhaps I will skip the, the front end without and trigger system. Uh, okay, just, just two, 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 two words on this. So uh, each, each module has, uh, has uh, 256 channels and they have to, to, to be read out fastly and the data has to be put out fastly. Uh, the, the, this is achieved by, by two low power gigabit transceiver which, which send out data uh, at the rate of 3.28 gigabyte per second. So th they are t these are separated separate for, for trigger and data readout because they have to be operated differently. And below is, is a schematic of, of how the trigger could, could, could run. So th there is a separation in two layers. One layer has a regional view which builds locally uh, sensor, uh, the sums of, of the sensors, of the energy in sensors, and uh, does, does a preliminary clustering and sends out these to a second layer 
of the trigger, which has a global view and performs super clustering and builds, builds electrons and jets uh, at, at the level one trigger level. Eventually, these, at this level, layer two, one could add tracker information if, if tracker uh, tri the trigger information is available. The modules look like this, so, so th these, these are hexagonal uh, cells which have uh, uh, the 256 channels, which are also hexagonal and are placed here. Uh, th this, uh, this design is, uh, is made, made robust and with a, with a very good uh, performance for cooling. This, this is a, a temperature map, so the variation here expected across the module is, is of the order of 1.3 1, 1 degrees Celsius. And here is how, how these modules are assembled into uh, into the <coughs> into the copper co copper so the one uh, they are similar okay one in the top one in the back and the cooling is run through the, through the copper this is our the, the, uh, this is the an aspect of, of the mechanical design so it's inspired in the Calis prototype which is uh, below so there are cassette, cassettes with the modules here uh, and they are uh, inserted into these alveolar structures uh, which, uh, depending of, we are talking about the E color or the, the front edge color, they, they are built of, of tungsten or brass. And here is how these alveolars are, 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 are disposed in the detector. So in, in order to not to, to have cracks in the detector, they have to be slightly tilted with respect to, to each other. So now I go to, to the current performance estimates. Uh, the, the following results, uh, are very preliminary and they are not even uh, uh, approved by, by CMS. So they, they, I'm showing them mostly to stimulate the discussion and uh, so that uh, we see where we are standing. So, th so th this 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 uh, this this is a summary of the e, 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 e gamma baseline performance. So. The, the plot here is showing as function of the layer number, so we have three layers in the ECAL, what is the, the radius needed to contain either 90% or 60%. So it's a measurement of the Molière radius. And what this plot is showing is basically in the first layers, the shower is contained in, um, in a region which is much more compact with respect to the Molière radius, which is of the other of 28 uh, 28 centimeters. So th this, this, this is a powerful handle in, when, you're talking, when we are uh, uh, talking about pileup environments because you can use an integration cone which is much narrower in the first layers and then you open up in the last layers where pileup is already diffused. Th this plot on the right is the relative resolution. Uh, there are three silicon widths showing here, so the stochastic term is of the order of 20% and the constant term here is of the order of, of uh, it's, it's very small. Uh, the, these numbers are, uh, it's important to, to say that we, they are verified against the Calis simulation. So we, we have simulated also Calis and verified that we are able to reproduce the results. And then we put in our setup and th these are the resolutions that we get. These resolutions are expected to be resilient in the, in the presence of pileup. Now this is a, a simulation with pileup for photons. And you see for different heater regions, the resolution is, is, uh, is kept. So, at, at, how, how, how can we use uh, our information at trigger, trigger level for, for, to trigger on electrons and photons? So, as I said, the trigger, trigger could work uh, with a first step, which does the seeding and, and first clustering. And uh, obviously, in the presence of pileup, you don't want to cluster blindly and you don't want to add energy blindly. So, what, what is done is, is a cleaning step where the, the threshold is applied uh, depending on where you are in the detector, so depending on the pseudo rapidity and also depending on the layer. So there is a dynamic threshold which removes 95% of the pileup energy, and then you start summing up. So the resolution uh, after, after, after subtracting the pileup and after some, some, some correction for, for the fact that you are now summing in a, a two by two centimeters square uh, zone, so it's, it's a very tight zone. Uh, it's, it's shown here, it, uh, and after this you can apply some, some simple electron ID based on longitudinal information. So you can use where the shower starts, how, how long did it, 
it, uh, it uh, lasts in the detector, and also what is the ratio of energies in the back layers to the front layers, so the, somehow the containment of the shower. And th this, is, this is a rock curve showing the, 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 the signal efficiency at 98%, uh, which shields uh, background rejection of the other 50% already at level one trigger level with very coarse information, very simple information. Uh, the, the, plot, uh, the, the next plots are showing the uh, pot, uh, possible turn-on curve for electrons with a PT of 35 GeV, and it's comparing our, our simulation with the current CMS turn-on curve. So that they are uh, very similar. There, there is somehow a worsening because the resolution is, is a bit worsened in, also in the presence of pileup, but they are, they are quite comparable. And the, the plot on the right shows the, the basically is the, the, the rate of triggered events, uh, and there is a, um, a black curve, which is CMS run one, uh, the, the rate of triggered events, and there is uh, this dashed on the top, which is the, the projected HG call uh, rate of events. So there is a, obviously an increase due to the fact that now we are talking about 140 pileup. But what is interesting is when we add the longitudinal information, so the, the position of the shower start, the length of the shower, and the containment of the shower, this rate is decreased by a factor of two, just f uh, thanks to the, to the fact that we have very, coarse inf very uh, fine information in the detector. <clears throat> one, one interesting aspect is also the, the, the possibility of using the, these showers to recover the, the pointing uh, uh, where, which vertex they, they came from. Okay, not totally, but at least we can recover the, the, the projectivity of, of, the, of, of the color emitter because we can go layer by layer. So th this plot is showing uh, simply, um, okay, it's barely legible, but it's the residual in the reconstruction of the Y position after an energy sum of the hits. So after a logarithmic energy, this is, the bias is zero. And we can uh, reconstruct the track by doing a fit. And the resolution is shown here as a function of the transverse energy of a photon. And it's, it's independent of pileup. So the, the, the red curve is with pileup 140. And the, the, the resolution is of the other four, four milli, milli radians, which would translate a heat of five into a, an uncertainty of three centimeters in, in the vertex. The, the, this is uh, putting all of these uh, somehow together. So the pileup subtraction capabilities, the tune calibrations, depending on how much on the area that you are using to integrate the energy, and also the, the recovery of the vertex information. I mean, th there is a very large potential to recover the, the, the performance uh, of the detector without pileup. So these plots are showing the X to gamma gamma mass resolution for zero pileup, 140 and 200 pileup, and the resolution, the, it barely changes, okay? There is some slight degradation, but it's, it's a quite good uh, prospect. Turning on to, to, to Adrans. So the, the, we, we have some preliminary estimates that indicate a very good Adrian resolution. Uh, th this plot on the left is showing, uh, the, so in, in gray is the CMS uh, test beam results for the E-cal barrel and the H-cal barrel from 2009. So th this was the, the pion resolution. And here is showing the, the expected pion resolution in, in our simulation. So it's significantly uh, better, um, and, but, but, and this is using a simple sum of the energies based on, the, on what we observe in each layer. Now there is potential to improve on this baseline by using the fact that as you have a very uh, fine uh, information, you can try to identify local, uh, e electromagnetic fluctuations in the shower. So you can try to find uh, regions in the detector where you have a very large energy density and try to to correct for this uh, to bring back the, 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 the resolution of pine. So this is somehow a, a compensation scheme. And the plot on the right is showing the uncorrected in red and after a global, a global software compensation there is a, an improvement of 14% expected just due to the fact that you can use further information that is in the other detector. Now t towards the VBF jet, uh, jet tagging and reconstruction. So the, the results are very pre preliminary and they are mostly projections for the level one trigger. So allow me to guide you through, 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 uh, through uh, uh, an event. 
and uh, illustrate the potential of, of, of this device. So th these plots here are showing, this is a VBF jet simulated, it has a very high energy, close to 2 TeV, and it's falling at 8 of 3. This is a cone of 0 0.5, uh, most of the blue are deposits from pileup, and 0 0.2 is, is I'm highlighting here because this is the core of the jet. Okay, this is what you see if you sum up all the ECAL. This is you, you, what you see if you sum up all the front front edge call. So uh, you see that the core of the jet is collimated in, in a region which is much narrower than than what we typically use for uh, for, for, for for jet reconstruction. Now, this is just a zoom, so we are talking about, uh, when you talk about 0 0.2 cone, we are talking about, I don't know, 40, 40 centimeters uh, in, uh, in X and Y, so E cal and H cal. Now, given that you have uh, uh, longitudinal information, you can go layer by layer. So this is layer 5, layer 15 in the E cal, layer 25, layer 5, and in the, the 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 core of the jet is preserved in each in each one of these layers, so you can it's still uh, it's somehow showing the, the tracking uh, capability, and uh, the pileup is still diffuse. Okay, it's mixed with with the uh, with the uh, with the yellow of the jet. This is a longitudinal view, so this is layer number. This is uh, x coordinate or y coordinate, and you see the jet evolving in in the calorimeter. So th th this cartoon is mostly to 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 illustrate that the pileup occurs in the first layers. Layer by layer, we are able to, in principle, to resolve the showers, and uh, we can, in the end, track the showers pointing to the primary vertex or close to it. Let's say. So how, how could this, this work out for, for, for level one trigger? So in principle, we can open up the, the regions of interest based on the electromagnetic clusters, as I've shown for the electron case. Uh, and this is uh, also because for jets, 25% of the jet energy is carried out by electromagnetic particles. So the, this, this would lead to 16 candidates per event for both fan caps and have an efficiency which is above 95% for signal. And this would work out not only for jets, but also for taus. Okay, so this is a tau efficiency depending on the decay mode, number of pi zeros, and it's all well above 95%. Uh, now, at trigger level, we don't need to use a 0 0.4 cone. We, we can use a tighter cone, 0 0.2, as I was illustrating with the cartoon, at the cost of losing some resolution, because now we are using a very tight cone to integrate the jet energy. So the, the intrinsic resolution expected is not totally bad. It's 25% at cal, color level, okay? Um, now, uh, you can uh, have some handle uh, to, re to reject uh, pileup by doing ratio of energies in subsequent cones, okay? So using this, uh, th this information, th this is the, 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 the rejection curve for VBF jets with respect to, uh, to, to pileup uh, using different cones, and you see that a 0 0.2 cone uh, is, is actually gives the optimal uh, response. And for, for a tau, uh, uh, going tighter into 0 0.15 actually is, is, a good, uh, is a good choice. Uh, given that we use a very tight cone, 0 0.2, how can we somehow recover the energy that is falling out of the cone? We can use the, the expected transverse profile of a jet and uh, do some recovery. So th this plot here is showing the resolution for ECAL and, and, and uh, front edge call for different cones. So 0 0.2 is here. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in black, uh, highlighted, and you see that this is without pileup. Uh, when you, of course, when you use a, tight, a larger cone of 0 0.5, you gain in response and resolution. So by working out the profile, the expected transverse profile of the jet, you can have a correction factor on, on a jet-by-jet -jet basis by using ratios of inner cones to project what is outside the cone. So this plot on the right show, shows uh, the, um, the effect of such a correction. So in red is the 0 0.2 integration cone, which is on the, on the black, and uh, in points, comparing to a cone of 0 0.5, is showing the, the, the effect of correcting jets within 0 0.2 to the outer cone. So you recover most of the resolution and response, even you didn't actually integrate the rest of the, of the jet. Now, if all of these, uh, when all of this is put together and we add further information about, um, about uh, jet substructure using taking advantage of granularity, 
uh, I mean, there, there are um, variables which, are, which can be computed directly at calorimeter level without even going to particle flow. Jet width, fragmentation functions, which are shown here, comparing quarks and gluons, th they can be computed at, at calorimeter level and, and have discrimination power. So they can be put together and to have a, a non-line quark-gluon discrimination. So th these plots are not to, done at color level. These are done now with particle flow. Uh, th these are at higher level, but it's to illustrate how, how this could work like, uh, could, could work in, in the future. And th so you could build a discriminator likelihood, and uh, this is the, the, the rejection curve. The, the, the studies that with particle flow um, show that th the actually this discrimination uh, is maintained in the presence of pileup. So this rock curve in the end, is, is similar, although these variables uh, have some change in the presence of pilot. Okay, so f regarding results with particle flow, I don't have m any to, to show, basically, because um, uh, particle flow as we have it in CMS uh, needs to be adapted for this detector. This has much higher granularity, and currently we are, we are in the process of, of adapting particle flow, but also profiting from the Pandora package that was developed by, 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 by LC and Click. So th this is work in progress, and we hope to, to profit from, from these algorithms. So the conclusions from my side is, uh, since we started the, this project, it was one and a half years ago, uh, we have made some, some nice progress, I think, in terms of understanding the capabilities of such detectors for, for, the, for the LHC. Uh, I think by now we have uh, a good understanding that the, the eye, eye granularity, both lateral and longitudinal, can, can, can buy us uh, some, 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 some performance in, in terms of tracking shower paths as a function of the depth, unfolding the non-projective geometry, so trying to get back to, to the vertex, measuring the, the energy of the showers using dynamic clustering and also dynamic pileup cleaning. And uh, with respect to now talking about hadrons, uh, hadron uh, energies, uh, estimate localized energy densities can gain us in resolutions in terms of compensating, um, compensating the, the, the hadron showers. So we think we are on the good path to, to enable efficient, robust, and almost pile-up independent measurements for the aluminosity LHC. So yeah, this is what I wanted to say. I have one question. Do you have the timing information? Yeah. The, how well? Yeah, I've shown only one plot. We have the, in principle, we have the capability to have timing information from the usage of the yes. TDC. So this is for 100 uh, femtocoulombs, so it's really the onset of the TDC. We expect uh, I mean, the core of, of, the, of the showers, uh, we have expect, I don't know, 20 to 30 cells, which will trigger the, the time over threshold. So we'll have, in principle, the, the simulation indicates a resolution of 50 picoseconds, which is uh, promising. It's very promising, because, yes. I mean, this can allow you to go in Z. Yes, huh? yes. So, the, yeah, but we don't have uh, full simulation results. This is the, the potential. Yes, no. <laughs> With respect to, uh, to the ILC and click design, you had to make a number of uh, modifications to, uh, to accept the LHC environment with such a high granularity. What do you think would be relaxed to go back to uh, E plus E minus collisions but the FCC this time? Well, I'm not very much acquainted with E plus E minus, but one of the things that had to be adapted was the was related to the to this radiation. So the fact that we use 300, 200, and 100, this this is really driven by by the neutral fluence, and this could be relaxed and gain. I mean, this drives the resolution in the end using 100 microns degrades the, the resolution. So this could be further further relaxed. Um, this is one thing. Um, I'm not an expert in cooling, but I, I, these, these had to be also adapted because we don't have pulsed beams. We have to operate uh, all, <laughs> all the time. Um, these, I, I'm not sure if it could be relaxed, but I'm not an expert in cooling. So, 
Roger Russell could be the, the person to ask. The, this pile up subtraction is done uh, uh, layer by layer by looking uh, at the other, I mean, the, uh, look if the other jets are pointing or not pointing toward the same the vertex, or this has nothing to do with that. My question is satellites of the two TV showers are treated in a different way, or, or they will look like uh, pile up? Yeah. So for, for the moment, it's a very simple offset correction. So we have some expectation, we go layer by layer and subtract the offset, but also reweight according to the, to the tails. Yes, so this, this topological information, this, this recovery is still to, to be put in place. Very nice, very nice work. Okay, so I think uh, we can close uh, here the session and